good morning. To God be the glory for all the wonderful things that he is doing. Good morning, Ellis Chapel Church family, to our pastor, and to all of you that are on Facebook, the ones that is in here this morning, on this rainy morning, we thank God for the rain. And we thank God for watching over us throughout all last night and blessing us to see another wonderful, beautiful day. We are so glad to be in the house of the Lord on this day, his day. We are going to get started into our lesson, but before we get started, we're going to pray. And I ask you all to remember all those that are sick and shut in. I ask you to remember uh, our church family. There's so much sickness throughout the world. So we ask you to remember. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful. We are so grateful for who you are, Lord God. Realizing, Father, that you are the one that created each and every one of us. You are the one, Father God, that is giving us the breath of life. You are the one, Father God, that is allowing us to be able to stand once again and proclaim your holy word. Father God, we say thank you. Most of all, Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ the one that died for our sin, the one that redeemed us back to you. Oh, Father, we say thank you. We give your name all the praise, all the glory, all the honor, because, Father, it's you and you alone that deserve all our praises. Father, I ask you to take Rose out of self. You speak through me, Father God. You use me, Father God, for your glory that you would get all the praise. For I ask this prayer in your son Jesus Christ's name, I pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. We have another great lesson today, and not only today, but for the next quarter. This entire quarter is dealing with women's the next four lessons. And our lesson today is coming out of Luke, the second chapter, 16 through the 21st verse. At, no, Luke, the second chapter, 36 through the 38th verse. Also, Acts, the second chapter, 16 through the 30, 21st verse. At, and the 21st chapter of Acts, the eighth through the ninth verse. Luke is the one that wrote both of these gospels, the gospel of Luke and also the gospel of Acts. And Luke is known as the physician. The subject of our lesson in the precept for living is prophesying women. Prophesying women. And if I would use for another subject, it would be women's call by God. I said prophesying women, that's prophesying daughters. But women's call by God, that's what I would use for another subject. And what I'm going to do this morning, I'm just going to break it up in the section the way they have it broke up. Uh, in our lesson this morning, the first section is Luke, the second chapter, 36 through the 38th verse, and then I will go into the book of Acts. Luke 2, 36 through 38. Anna, a prophet was also there in the temple. She was the daughter of Penuel, Penuel from the tribe of Asher, and she was very old. Her husband died 
when they had been married only seven years. Then she lived as a widow to the age of 84. She never at, left the temple, but stayed there day and night, worshiping God with fasting and prayer. She came along just as Simeon was talking with Mary and Joseph. She began praising God. She talked about the child to everyone who, who had been waiting expectantly for God to rescue Jerusalem. That is our first text for today. And it's dealing with a prophetess named Anna. Now, just to give you a little bit of background on this, what, is, what happened before this is God had promised. It was the day of dedication for uh, Jesus Christ. He had been born. He had been circumcised after eight days. And, and now his mother and father, Joseph, took him to the temple to be dedicated to the Lord. Simeon, he was there in the temple the lord had promised him that he would not see death until he see the messiah and on that particular day that particular day was the day that they brought jesus christ our lord our savior into the temple to be dedicated to the lord and while they was there and walked in right in on time on time and she as i said earlier she was a prophetess a prophetess is no more than a preacher a teacher one that carried the word of god as we read in our scripture anna was uh, uh she lived in the temple 84 years, I read. I don't know, some of you might have read something uh, uh, different. I think the old, the uh, 1611 King James Version says uh, uh, four scores and four. Um, but she lived there in the temple mm -hmm. for 84 years. And and I, I, I moved a little bit too fast, but but I just want to go back for a few minutes, a few moments, and open up. I said, the word prophesy, I mean teach, preach, proclaimer of the word of God, the message of God. But my question is, wonder why did the writer of this lesson decided to zero in on women? Could it be because in the Old Testament and the New Testament, women were not recognized much in the Bible, that they were treated like an old shoe or a piece of property, or that we only hear mostly about the men proclaiming the word of God, although women played a great role or great part in the ministry. Or could it be that we are still dealing with issues concerning women taking a leading role in the ministry as a pastor. These are questions that came into my mind as I was studying about the word of God and as I was studying about women. I find this very interesting. We are going to, now we are going to see what Dr. Luke has to say about it. Therefore, we are going to review, we are going to examine how God called and empowered women to proclaim his matches. Then we are going to affirm a uh, 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 contribution of godly women to the church mission. 
and advocate support for greater recognition of God's call women in the church. That was my introduction. I slipped, I, 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 I went over, I just slipped by at the beginning. But, but we're going to deal with this, and we're going to see what Luke has to say about women in the, in the gospel. I've already read the scripture concerning Anna, and I've already told you all a, a little bit about her. She was a prophetess. She was a proclaimer of the word of God. And I find this was most unusual. There had been, there had not been a prophet in Israel for some 300 years. Yet God seemed to raise up a prophet and a woman at that. Women's Leaders was very rare in that day. She apparently talking about Anna was very special, was a very special woman, one who loved God and hoped in God with all her beings. She was evidently on a spiritual part with other saintly women used by God throughout Scripture, such as Miriam. Hannah and Deborah. As a prophetess, she was constantly praying, constantly studying, not constantly fasting in the Word of God. We all could take a lesson from Hannah because the Lord tells us in 2nd. Timothy 2.15, to study, to show ourselves approved unto God that workmen need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And then in 2 Timothy 4 and 2, he tells us to be prepared, whether it is favorable or not. Now, I'm taking this out of the New uh, Living Translation. In other words, we should be ready at all times to share the word of God. If you are a believer, if you have accepted Jesus Christ in your life, we should be able to have a word concerning Jesus Christ. Anna was married to her husband for seven years when he died. And in the uh, uh, King James Version, in the New King James Version, the 1611, as I said earlier, she, re she gave the remainder of her life to the Lord. 84 years, it says, that she was in the temple. Am I right about that, Reverend uh, Lahar? 84 years. And you know, back during the Bible days, Young girls got married around about 12, 13 years old. They were considered as being an uh, older lady if they waited till they was around about 15 to 16 years. So if you do the calculation on that, Anna probably was around about in her late teenage age or she was in her early 20s when her husband died. Can you imagine 84 years? She was dedicated. She was committed. She put her focus on Christ the rest of her life. And she could have, being that young sister Cora, sister Nancy, and some of you all that are in here, being that young, she could have went the other way. She could have got married, and there would not have been anything wrong with that. But she chose to fully and completely give her life to Christ. Now, that is a great lesson for us today. That is a great lesson for young people today. Those that is not married, 
That is a great lesson how they could dedicate their lives to Christ. And even if they are married, they could put Christ first in their lives, giving him their all. We could do that. All it takes is number one. You have to be saved. You have to accept him. You have to know him personally. And then number two is a made up mind. That I'm going to serve God the rest of my life. I'm going to do his will. I'm going to do what he wants me to do. It was amazing that Hannah didn't get out there. She didn't run the streets. She didn't run out to me and folks. She didn't run out the worldly stuff. But she committed her life to Christ, and she was faithful until the very end. The Bible says she was an old lady, a great old lady. Let me hush. Anybody have anything to say about that? I hope I'm pronouncing that word right, Anna. I've been trying to say Anna, you all. But uh, does anyone have anything that they want to add to that? Concerning the day, how we should live, knowing that we are in Christ. Anyone? That lets us know also that older people have a lot of wisdom. Yes. And by Anna being chosen to live the life she did, she had a lot of wisdom. Mm -hmm. And a lot of time you have older people that, we shun away because we think they don't know anything. But if you sit down and you talk to someone that's got a lot of age on them, in their 80s and 90s, you find that they can tell you some stuff that happened way back that relates even to today. And they, they, they tell you things that will just stick with you yes. if you just listen. But sometimes we, we don't listen to the older people. You know, they got a lot of age on them that, that are in the church like that. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. We don't listen, Sister Tom, and we suffer the consequences of our action when we don't listen. Going back to Anna, it says, she did not give herself to the flesh as she grew old. Uh-oh. I said, Lord, have mercy. By overeating, oversleeping, Immoral gratification or meaningless activity that wastes time. She devoted herself to serving and hoping in God, praying and bearing witness as a servant. Now that is awesome. That is awesome. And see, when we get that type of mind frame, God will always bless us. When we keep our hope in him, when we stay steadfast to him, when we commit our lives to him, he will supply our every need. It says she stayed in the temple day and night. I don't know whether they had fixed her room in the temple or not, or I don't know whether she came to the temple every day, but one thing I do know is she dedicated the remainder of her life to Christ. When I think about it, you know, I said, well, I, I was, as I was reading, I said, well, she, she, she uh, had, didn't have as much uh, 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 stuff that we have to deal with today. There's so much out here in the world today that we have to deal with. But then I said, that what she had to deal with, she dealt with it. And it did not sway her away from keeping her trust and her faith in Christ. We as women, we as men, we as servants of God, we should be dedicated. We should be fully sold out, fully committed to doing what God will is. Amen, amen. And whenever we walk with God, whenever we talk with him, he will guide our footsteps. She came into the room where Joseph 
and Mary and the baby Jesus was. And when she stepped in there and laid eyes on Jesus, she began to praise him, giving him glory. She knew. The Bible did not say that Simon told her that that was the Messiah. It says that she, she knew that he was the Messiah. And out the praising God and giving him the glory, she left. And she told everyone that she came in contact with that the Messiah was here. That the Messiah had been born. Isn't that great? Now I want to ask you a question. Are you totally devoted to God? Sold out to him completely? How much time do you spend with the Lord in prayer, in fasting, in studying his word? Do you cut off the cell phone, the TV, Facebook, Twitter? Even tell your family, look, this is going to be my time with God. I'm going to spend this time. How much time are we giving to the Lord. Are we, com are we committed to him like she was? Mm. That's just a question, you all. You don't have to answer it. I just want you all to think about it. Sister teacher, Sister teacher, I would say that uh, when you was asking a question about the commitment she made, we have to think that in her culture, it was important for women to be married and have children. Yes. That was, that was showing that God had his hands on you, mm -hmm. that he was blessing your life, especially if you had a male child. You know, they thought highly. They had certain beliefs in their, their cultural system, in their religion, that uh, she could have easily yes. have been pressured. Mm -hmm. you, you young. Mm -hmm. Your husband... Like you said, she might have been between 19 and 21 when, when her husband died. Now, what you need to do is find you another good yes, man. Yes, yes. To take care of you. And, and you think about, in our society, mm -hmm. the pressure that a lot of times that you can feel from society to do certain things. Yes. To blend in, to fit in. But when you're committed to Christ, or when you're committed to God, you, you can't allow those pressures mm -mm. Uh, if you're going to listen to him and obey him and his word. Yes, yes, yes. So she, she, was, she was steadfast. I, I looked at it, I said, well, this lady had to be over 100 years old. Yes. Because if you add the seven years and the 84, that's yes. 91. Yes. And we know most likely, if, even if you got married young, you would have been 12 to maybe 15 years old. Mm -hmm. So if you just add that to it, mm -hmm. that put over 100. She had sure. made a commitment. To, that she was going to see the Messiah. And, and when we make a commitment, when we make commitments, do we stand by our commitments yes, like yes. she stood by her commitment? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, that's, that's good, Reverend Lockhart. And that's a good question. When we make a commitment to Christ, do we make sure that we stand by that commitment? As I said earlier, this is a great lesson for all of us. We can take the example of her life and think about our life and what we're doing right now and how committed and, and, and dedicated we are to God. You got something? I, I was going to say, I, I also thought about, you know, it said that she went to the temple every day. Mm -hmm. I said, we people make fun of us for coming to the church three times a week. <laughs> you go down there every time the doors open. Yes. Well, what better place to be? Yes, 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 yes. In the Lord's house. Yeah. In the Lord's house. Okay, we're going to move to our next outline at uh, Acts, the second chapter, 16 to 21st verse. And it says, No. What you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. 
In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. This is from the New Living Translation. This is in case someone is reading it from another translation. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see vision. And your old men will dream, dream dreams. In those days, I'll pour out my spirit even on my servant. Men and women alike. And they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below. Blood and fire and cloud of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrive. But everyone who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. Everyone. In order to understand this, to give you a little bit of background on this, just before Jesus ascended into heaven, he, he, he talked with his disciples and he told them to go to Jerusalem and stay there until the coming of the Holy Spirit. And they was obedient. They did what God said do. It was 120 Men and women that was there in Jerusalem. I think as I was reading, as I was studying, one of the uh, commentaries that I read, they said they was in the upper room. You all remember the upper room? It was in the upper room when Jesus had the last Lord's Supper before he uh, was uh, led out and, and crucified. The upper room. It was 120 that was assembled in the upper room. And then the scripture made mention of the women. It says Mary, the mother of Jesus, she was there. The wives of the apostles, they was there. And those women that followed Jesus, they was there also. A hundred and twenty of them. And it was on the day of Pentecost that they all gathered together. Now, on the day of Pentecost, that was a great event in history for the Christians, for the Jews. And there were several reasons why the event was so important. It was the coming of the Holy Spirit on that day. It was the birth of the church on that day. It was the cooperation feeling of the Holy Spirit of the body of believers with the promise of presence of Christ. And it was the personal feeling of individual believer by the Holy Spirit. It was when Christ, the Holy Spirit, came and dwelt on the inside of the believer. Before then, the Holy Spirit will come up on them and leave, but this was a feeling, and we, every believer that believe in Jesus Christ and has accepted him as a follower, we have the Holy Spirit within us 24-7. Oh, it was the presence and the power of God come up up on believers gifting them and equipping them to proclaim the glorious measures of salvation to men. And in order to understand where we are coming from with the scripture, because I said, Peter said no when I started. He said, no, what you see is predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. Now let me tell you a little bit what happened when the Holy Spirit came that day. It said it came as a rushing mighty wind. And it sat upon each and every believer that was in there, 120 of them in all. And they start speaking other language. And there was people from all over the world. There was devout Jews 
Jews and there was other people and they could understand what was being said that day by those Galileans. And they were surprised. They was amazed because they said they, they don't know our language. How is it that they can speak us? But I tell you, when the Holy Spirit take over, there is nothing that he cannot do. And they spoke in the, in, in, in the language where everybody, as I said, that was there could understand what they were saying. Men and women, not just the men, it was the women as well, 120. And Peter, the leader of the pack, <laughs> I call him Peter. The one that said he would not deny Christ, but deny him three times. Peter, when he was standing around warming himself during the time that they had arrested Jesus, began to curse and, 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 and said that he didn't know him. Peter, he was the one after the Holy Spirit came into his life. He was the one that stood up. Not only did he stand up, but he spoke up. That's letting us know we as children of God, we need to speak up. It comes a time when we need to let people know who Christ is. Just like those 120, they're in Jerusalem. Peter stood up because some of the people that was there, they couldn't understand, they was amazed, and some of them even start marking them, saying they must be full of wine. And Peter stood up and he said, no, it's too early in the morning. It's only nine o'clock. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. I knew I was gonna have a time with this lesson. He said, but this is what has been predicted. This is what, Job prophesied, prophesied in the Old Testament. He said, Yo, there will be in the last days, in the last days, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. The last days begin when Jesus came to the earth. We are 2,000 years into the last days, Reverend Lord. And he said, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your men and your women shall prophesy. As I said earlier, prophesy is nothing but proclaiming the word of God. It's preaching. It's teaching. It's giving the word of God, men and women. Anyone have anything to say before I go any further? Sister teacher, that also takes the responsibility of uh, we, can, we can get wrapped up in there thinking it's only the pastor that's supposed to go win people. But from the scriptures, uh, we look at Anna, she, when she realized the Messiah was here, mm -hmm. she told everybody. Yes. So when we know it as individual believers, when we know it, it's our responsibility to tell everybody we come in contact with that the Messiah is here, mm -hmm. that, that Jesus was crucified, that he was buried, but he got up three days later with all power. He has ascended up into heaven, but that's not the end of the story. He's coming back. Yes, he is. And you got to know him for yourself. Yes. So if all of us get on the one accord, if all of us get on fire to tell everybody we come in contact with about this man that changed our life, Look at the impact we would have in our families, in our communities, in our state, in our uh, nation, across the globe, if everybody that know him would tell somebody about him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? Yes. Especially during times like these. I know that we cannot get out like we want to. I know that we're locked inside our houses and stuff, but yet and still, we got Twitter, we got Facebook, we got the telephones. We can call people. We can call our friends. We can call our co-workers. We can call our family. We still can let people know about Christ. Thank God for the modern technology we have yes. today. Yes. That's why we are down here this morning, spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. And once again, the women was included. It wasn't 
just the men. It was the woman. And as I was studying this, the Lord let me know I can use whoever I choose to carry out my word. That women can take a role in the ministry just like a man. If he choose a woman to become a pastor of the church, he can choose a woman. Jesus used a donkey. He used a rooster. And he even said in his word, if, you, if we don't speak out, what did he say? The rocks will cry out. My point is, I don't want no rocks crying out for Rose Kyra because my mouth is too big. I would rather proclaim it myself. Jesus can use any of us. It doesn't matter how old he is. It's not just the women's, but if you was a young man, a young, a, a young boy, they thought that you could be used. But we find out God can use you if you're young. Some of the ones that was called in the Bible were seven years old, eight years old, to be prophets. And another thing came to mind. Whether you've been divorced or not, if you pray, ask God to forgive your sin and accept him in your life, God will, I think in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, he says, when you are in Christ, you become a new creature. Old things has passed away. Behold, all things become new. He can use you. Christ did not show no partiality. We have been studying lessons after lessons after lessons, years after years after years, but yet and still we have a problem with some situations. Like women's in the ministry. Like divorced people. Like people being young. Like where you come from. How much education you have. God yeah. will equip you. He'll get you ready to prepare his word. Reverend Lahar, you got something to say? Uh, Luke, one of the things when you read the book of Luke, or the gospel of Luke, uh -huh. Luke deals with in Acts and in the gospel. Yes. Because Luke would have been considered an outcast, an yes. outsider. Yes. He deals with more of people who are on that margin, marginalized, outcast, thought not worthy. Mm -hmm. He dealt with them because from his own uh, life, he saw how that made people feel. Yes. So we come to the table when we're marginalized, when we're thought less of, when we think that we're, uh, other people think God can't use us. When we find out he can, we're the biggest proponents and the biggest advocates for those people that God can use whomever he chooses to yes. use. Yes, yes. We don't get to dictate who God chooses to use. No. He can use whomever he wants to use. Yes. So that's, that's, that's what Luke is wanting us to see yes. in his writings, that these people in their culture would have been thought of, you, God can't use you. Mm -hmm. You're not the right one. You need, to be, you need to be this type of person. You need to come from this family. You need to come from this group. You need to have this amount of money. You need to be yes, this, yes, have this yes. education. But what he's saying is, no, God can use anybody he chooses to use. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. And you got to know. You got to know that for yourself. Because you might have came up, like I did, up under a pastor that didn't believe that God could use a woman or that God could use whoever he chose. I came up up in the dirt, and I don't mind saying it, I came up in the Baptist church. I was talking about that. God called me to preach when I was a teenager, but I didn't go forth because I was being obedient to my parents because she had been brought up like that. But when you grow up and you study the word of God for yourself and you find out, what God's word says, you got to stand on his word. <laughs> oh, boy. Lots of memory came back to me as I was studying this lesson. I remember when I was going to Fruitland Bible Institute. 
And uh, I was the only lady preacher up there. Only lady. And one particular morning, Reverend Lahar, I don't know whether you were there or not. Uh, Might have been afterward. But one particular morning, two of the guys came in to the classroom, two of my classmates. They came in, and they was upset. I mean, they were so upset, they did, they did not care who heard them talking and what they was talking about. They wanted us to hear because they was upset, Reverend Lahar. They was upset because their pastor had ordained a woman, and they said, that's not right. The teacher heard them. He carried them outside and talked to them. And then he brought them back in. And he came to me and he apologized because I heard him. But I knew who called me. It wasn't those guys. You got to know that when you are a child of God, you're going to be faced with situations that people believe are being taught and it's embedded in their minds. And then after he finished talking to me, he went back up to his dad and he said, so I want you all to open up the Bible to Job 2. Job, the second chapter and 28th verse. And then I want you to go to Acts, the second chapter, what we are reading right now. And then I want you to go to Galatians 3 and 28. Where the word of God says, Paul says, there's no difference in the Jew nor the Greek. No difference in the male nor the female. That we are all one in Christ Jesus. Now I know that the Lord called the man to be the head of his family. But God is the head of his church. Therefore he can choose and use whoever he decides to do. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, if I didn't have my focus on God and know who sent me there, I would have left Reverend Lahar. I would have got upset. And I would have left and I would not have continued going to Fruit and Bible Institute. But to their surprise, Sister Toms, see, that's what happened. I'm going back to Anna. Anna. See, she had a made-up mind. It didn't matter how much they talked about her. Can you imagine how the way it was doing her culture, doing her day, what she had to face? At least the women are being recognized a little bit more now. Not like they should. And I think that's why the writer of this lesson is dealing with women this whole quarter. Because God wants us to get it right. We have to examine our own hearts and make sure that we are not holding anything within ourselves concerning anybody that God chooses to use. It's a self-examination. Remember, Lord, I can't do it for me. I can't do it for him. Nathan, you can't do it. We've got to do it ourselves. Oh, boy. And guess what? While I was there at Fruitland, you didn't know about this, Reverend Lahar. They had put up a bet. The guys. She had never graduate. Put money up. She had never graduate. And, and, and you know what? It wasn't my intention, intention to go to Fruitland. All I wanted to do was learn more about God's word. Because I knew he had called me into the ministry years ago. And I knew it was time to go forth. I did not even go up there with the intention of graduating. But like once I started, I could not stop. Drove up and down the road by myself sometimes, but that was all right. That was all right. Ran in the storms, talked about Mark and all that stuff. When you are a child of God, they hated Jesus, therefore they're going to hate you. The world not going to love you, they're going to hate you. 
If you don't do what people want you to do, they're going to separate themselves from you. Oh, good grief, I want to shout this morning. Because we as Christians, we got to stand and we got to stand boldly. We got to stand strong. We got to do what God tells us to do. Even if it's our life. Good God Almighty. It takes a made up mind. It takes a made up mind. And it takes knowing Christ. You got to know. You can't do it without him. You got to know it. Hmm. Yeah. I didn't even know they was betting on me, Sister Tom. But guess what? One of the classmates came. He was just overjoyed. He said, I told them they were going to lose their money. And they did. Ha! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I give him the glory. Rose is not giving me the glory. He's God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Let me move on. Let me move on. Let me move on. Galatians three twenty three. I've already told you about it. Just know who call you. Just know who choose you. Just know who want to use you. And then if we move on to Acts, the 21st chapter, the 8th through the 9th verse, it says, the next day we went on to Caesarea and stayed at the home of Philip, the evangelist, one of the seven men who had been chosen to distribute food. He had four unmarried daughters who had the gift of prophecy. That's a self-explanation within itself. Philip, he was one of the ones that were chosen. Remember when Paul told him, it, there, he said uh, they was having a problem with distributing the food to every, the women. And, and Paul told him, said, look among you. Choose seven men full of the Holy Spirit. Philip was one of those men. The weight on the table. Make sure the women's got what they deserve. Make sure they got what they needed to eat. Make sure they got the same amount the other people was getting. Philip. There's a little bit more about Philip, but my time is almost gone, so I'm not going to go into that. But Philip, not only was he a deacon, but he was an evangelist. He carried the word of God. He told the word of God. Uh, Reverend Corey, that was uh, that would have been the uh, the apostles mm -hmm. that they're talking about here. That Philip was one of the seven that we look at as the deacons were yes. the first. We we use that text as saying the deacons were set aside mm -hmm. to be uh, distributors of the food. Mm -hmm. The apostles, uh, the the eleven or the twelve at the Matthias had went on, mm -hmm. they, when they had the dispute between the, the Grecians and the, uh, I think the Hebrew women, yes, uh, yes. about, they, wasn't, they were overlooking uh, right. the, the ones. Gracian. So they set him up, and he was one of the ones, and he was the one that went out and, and, and taught and preached to the Ethiopian eunuch. Mm -hmm. And now he's in, in uh, we find him in Caesarea, where he's been, I think, over about 20 years now. Yes. Yes. And he's got these daughters, and they said the daughters may have been, uh, had committed themselves. I thought about like nuns, people yeah. who set themselves aside, mm -hmm. eunuchs that, that they're not going to participate in, in, in the world's mm -hmm. activities, but set themselves aside to serve God. And they had made a commitment. Mm -hmm. and, and we see these four, and God was using them, the young ladies, to prophesy and to tell the story about. Uh, uh, the future, and they could tell. They could tell what was going to happen. Yes. Uh, what was coming uh, is prophets foretell and foretell the future. They can tell what's present and what's going to happen in the future, just depending on how God wants to use them. Right. So it shows us more evidence yeah. of women being used yes. by God. Women's being used by God. God. As I said earlier, he doesn't show favoritism. He doesn't show partiality. He used all his children. 
And I think that is something that we all should get out of this lesson today and even the lessons to come. I have another question. Have you ever felt the urgency of speaking in faith under God's word? How did you respond? What was the result? If you have a problem for speaking out for God, seek God for the boldness to speak in favor of the gospel. And I'm going to end on that note. I hope and I pray that all of us as Christians, all of us as followers of Christ, all of us that has accepted him in our lives will know within ourselves who we are, who call us, and not show any partiality or discrimination against anyone. God bless you. Heavenly Father, we are thankful once again. Father God, we're just so thankful for your word. Father, when we get into your word and we study your word and we apply your words to our hearts and our minds, Father God, there is not anything that we face in this life that is not in your word. So Lord, help us to be like the ones we just read about. Help us to be obedient. Help us to to be committed and, and completely sold out for you. Help us, Father God, to carry the word and let people know that your son, Jesus Christ, has already came into the world and that when he come back the second time, Father, the second time, he's coming back to get all his children to take them home to be with him. Oh, Father God, we're just so thankful. We're just so grateful. We're thankful and grateful for all you do. And Father, once again, we ask you to bless our pastor as he get ready to bring forth your word of life. Use him, Lord God, like you never used him before. Let him speak to us, Lord God, because we realize, Lord, that you have given him your word for us. Father, we pray for all those on Facebook. We pray for our church family that you would just keep us all close to you during times like these, Lord. Even though we can't meet together, help us to open up your word. Help us to let you talk to us through your word. Oh, Father God, we just love you. We adore you. And we lift up your name. For it's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen.